Today we are heading to the edge of the world and starting our journey back down south before leaving the coast and heading into the wilderness. Here in Arthur River we found our campsite next to the parks office to be protected from the insane west coast winds and we also found we had access to clean toilets and a cold shower allowing us to save our tank water for the wilderness soon to come. So after a cold shower start to the day, we packed up Gertie and headed back over the bridge to the edge of the world viewing platform. All right, so we're at the edge of the world. What's your first thought? It's windy. Very, very windy at the edge of the world. It's like, oh, it's a wild, wild country out here. Okay, so there's actually a dump spot here. I reckon by far this is probably the windiest place that we've been to. It actually really does feel like the edge of the world. Looking at that surf is just animalistic. Like it's blue. The name the edge of the world was given to this place for a good reason. It's a wild place with the roaring 40s generating swells that are simply spectacular viewing. We can't imagine this place without wind. In fact, it's probably the conditions out here that prevent population growth. All the same, it's a popular place for summer vacationers and tourists like us. You know, from the latest pirates of the Caribbean where all the ships get wrecked, it's just that wild part of the ocean, like it's where no one goes. That's what this feels like. I'd hate to have a small tinny. So we've just met some Cuda crew, uh, Corey, Laura, and I've just got to ask what the other two's name is again, but they're just Cuda people. And they've offered to drive us down to the petroglyphs at Nelson Bay. So they've got some four wheel drives. They've been nice enough to share a, a seat or two, make some room for us. People that you meet on the road, mate. Wicked. This is Lena. She's absolutely cooed up, and these are the people that have offered to take us with them. And this is Robbie. You, you. Okay, so we've just learnt the trucks have names too. There's Susie and Annie. Annie belongs to Corey and Laura. Hello. Hey team, how's it going? Uh, Co Corey's me boy. He's he's one of the most cooter people I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and we're going to hit the road with them now and go and check it out. The petroglyphs are accessible by either foot or vehicle. We believe the walk is about 20 minutes from the last non-four-wheel drive car park, but if you're lucky to have friends in four-wheel drives, you can escape the wind and head to the petroglyph site with ease. Do you chicken out? Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking, joking, let's bike here. It's been a while since we've done actual full driving. Yep, yep, we're gonna bike here. Alright, we're here. We better get out and suss it out, eh? If you want to see some more of the Troopy Tribe, head over to their Instagram pages. We'll leave the links in the description below. <laughs> <laughs> Not much information is available to us regarding the history and the meaning of this particular rock art. However, in an article written by Peter Sims titled No Reprieve for Tasmanian Rock Art, we can gain a greater understanding. Quote, According to local Aboriginal belief systems, petroglyphs are permanent signs left by ancestral beings. As the initiators of Aboriginal laws, the ancestral beings left designs in the rocks as records both of their existence and as evidence of the laws they formulated. The petroglyphs we see today are a reminder of the laws set down by them for all Aboriginal people to follow and the motives continue to embody their spiritual powers. This dictates certain obligations on Aboriginal custodians to look after these places of special potency, which are handed down from one generation to the next. As such, they are an inherited responsibility. 
If the custodians fail to protect these special sites, the spiritual powers may be unleashed, harming both the people and the land. What do you think, Rudy? What did they say? <laughs> now that Ring had a taste of four-wheel driving, he had to show the guys what Gertie was capable of. After a few convincing nudges, we put Gertie to the test. Yeah, we'll be alright through there. Can you be alright? Just don't go too close and take the mirrors off. <laughs> or oh, take the mirrors off because you didn't want them anyway. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Fuck it out! <laughs> oh, I still gotta get out! Oh, this is a stitch up! Where's he going down? Okay. Okay. Oh, you bogged. <laughs> Pussies! Hey, goody. <laughs> After a fabulous day of adventure and a tasty shared dinner, we all knew this was just the first of many shared adventures to come. If you've enjoyed this adventure, consider subscribing and switching on notifications so you don't miss out on our next adventures. And show the like button some love if you want to see more of Ring Four Driving in Gertie. Until next time, thanks for watching. So, <laughs> so from now it just gets better. You're like, well, yeah. we went there. We might as well try and push it. Next yeah. day yeah. we see them all, all deli, 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 deli. We'll try one of those uh, crocodile river crossings. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.